warm welcome to At Home Worship with Ascension Lutheran Church in beautiful Nelson, British Columbia. Today is Sunday, October 11th, and it is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Today is also Thanksgiving Sunday. Thanksgiving is actually a cultural holiday and is not a regular part of the church year calendar. However, being thankful is at the heart of Christian worship and prayer life. So we could say that to Christians, every day is Thanksgiving Day. Still, worship on Thanksgiving Sunday offers us an opportunity for a deep and genuine expression of gratitude for the natural world, recognizing our daily reliance upon clean water, healthy soil, seeds, sunlight, farmers, and workers. Thanks be to God for all these good gifts. During today's at-home worship service, you can look forward to hymns, lessons, prayers, special music, and a sermon by Pastor Nolan. Though we are physically apart in our homes, we are together in spirit. We are so glad that you are here. At harvest time, we join the psalmist in offering thanksgiving to God. You crown the year with goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. We are grateful for the abundance of the good things of God's creation, and St. Paul reminds us that our thanksgiving flows over into generosity. As the body of Christ in the world, we give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. So we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We are not thankful for your bountiful gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin, sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming, Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcomed. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Our first reading is from Hebrew scripture and tells of bounty. Not only abundant food, but all one needs in order to prosper and be a success. See how it all connects to owning land. We think of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but think also of land issues linked to the First Nations. However, this reading is not about rights. It is about self-acclaim, that sneaky little ego that gets drunk on our achievements. Once more, we are called back to the Lord of life and the earth, as we hear from long, long ago in Deuteronomy 8, verses 7 to 18. 
For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. Thanks be to God. In the 1500s, a Spanish woman, Teresa of Avila, said, Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. As we live abundant lives, we are to remember that and to give thanks. Here is how St. Paul said it to early Christians and as he says it to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness will endure forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. Will they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you? Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. May the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. Sunday we celebrate in thanks for the harvest is recorded in the Gospel of Luke chapter 17 beginning at verse 11. Glory be to you O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village ten lepers approached him 
Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. As you have opened your hand, with abundant harvest. Now open our hearts and minds to your word, O God. Your word is truth. Amen. So this morning, as we reflect on the bounty of our gifts, because it's Thanksgiving, I would like to focus on two things. One is impulse control, and the other is what is simple praise. So what is it about giving thanks at this harvest time? Is it duty or obligation? Is giving thanks a polite behavior that we use to gain favor? Or is it a sign of good breeding to say thank you? In his book of the Eskimos, written 60 years ago, a Danish writer, Peter Freuchen, tells of his living many years among the Inuit people in northern Greenland. One day, coming home hungry from a failed walrus hunting expedition there, he found one of the successful hunters dropping off several hundred pounds of meat for him. He thanked him profusely, but the man objected indignantly. Up in our country, we are human, said the hunter. And since we are human, we help each other. We don't like to hear anybody say thanks for that. What I get today, you may get tomorrow. Up here we say that by gifts, one makes slaves. And by whips, one makes dogs. What did the Inuit man mean with gifts make slaves. The leper's story reveals the dread around infectious disease long ago. Popular belief was God had judged lepers, condemning them as diseased or cursed. Abnormality of any kind was believed to be a threat to everyone. Only keepers of cultural rules could lift the stigma of affliction to declare well-being. So priests were the Bonnie Henrys of the day, not only to educate and provide calm, but to pardon the afflicted. Luke's gospel raises a moral question. It's something of a dilemma. You see, Jesus healed nine Judeans with one Gentile. They were all expelled. All were banished, isolated for fear of infection. Then healing dismissed disease and sin 
to restore life. One leper in ten gave thanks. But do we not expect Jesus to heal them just because he can? Why thank him for his ability? Infectious dis-ease has a cruelty about it. Fear ditches compassion as we react. Take COVID-19. It's a sly virus calling for strong measures. It haunts us today. Lately, a young woman of South Asian origin had the task of monitoring local Walmart shoppers. Kindly asking a man to wear a mask at the door, she offered him one. Yelling profanities at her, he stomped into the store with no mask. His hostility shocked and scared her. I wonder how such hostility hurts all of us. How can God's realm solve that? There are some dog breeders who care about their puppies and expect puppy buyers to commit to formal dog training. They care. One dog trainer says the most vital part in training puppies is learning to check excited feelings, impulse control in both dog and owner. Can we apply that to this gospel? First, the 10 lepers story is set in real life on the way to Jerusalem. That meant on the way to the cross. Jesus' path was between Gentile Samaria and Jewish Galilee. And it's key, key especially for the Gentile writer, Luke. He does not miss a certain irony in that. Luke's Jesus is a man for everybody. To Luke, Jesus is for all. God blesses everyone. And he reminds us in this story, Jewish lepers are not God's only loved ones. Samaritans are too. No other gospel tells this story, only in Luke. And there is this oddity of a Samaritan among Jews, all in the same boat, Jews and Samaritans, all lepers. And Jesus lets them all approach him. Then Jesus intervenes. All lepers will receive the priest's get out of COVID hell free cards. Priests were to judge the purity or impurity of the sufferer. So being allowed to go home, these lepers can once more be with loved ones. And that's deliverance. This unusual story tells of a Gentile outsider who is overwhelmed by his sense of relief, but who still understands grace. He shows impulse control, you see. Instead of grabbing the gift and running, he thanks Jesus as God's agent. But were God's chosen people in grace for heeding Jesus' directions? Remember, Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the priests. So is this story telling us to give thanks for special favors? Is that the point of Luke's gospel? 
Twenty some years ago, a local refugee group sponsored people from a broken nation. In time, someone noted how the family that had been rescued never thanked the churches that were sponsoring them. Then a committee member asked, what sort of obligation do we expect? And we might add, to make slaves? How we live affects how we react to life-changing experience. So if I live with loss or I'm unimpaired, if I'm black or white, Scottish or Korean, literate or trained by rote. I'm blind to the story. If I puzzle why nine lepers were impolite, though they followed Jesus' orders. Jesus does not need my thanks. What Jesus asks is, does a new life experience bring about praise to God? Fifty years ago, two seminarians, a couple of my roommates from seminary, met for a break together while they were on their separate internships. Each had a guitar which they locked in a car while shopping in a mall. On their return to the car, they found the car had been burgled. Both guitars were gone. Swearing, they stood looking around the parking lot. A young woman in long paisley dress with flowers in her hair came by. She stopped, smiled and said, hey, what's happening, man? One seminarian said, some bleep broke into my car, stole our guitars. The girl said, wow, praise the Lord, man. Something good will come of this. And she walked on. There it is, once again, God's chosen, ignoring impulse control to wear a mask or to be troubled. It's not about compliance or defiance, but rather it tests our caring for the other. In our times, as we experience COVID-19 threats, we have many chances to consider praising God. How do we faithfully praise the ground and source of all life who loves us? Happy Thanksgiving.
Together we confess our Christian faith, the faith into which we have been baptized, using today the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered as God's people on this day of Thanksgiving, we offer our prayers for the outpouring of God's love on the church, the world, and all those in need. With the words, Giver of all that is good, you are invited to respond. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. During these days of pandemic, we give thanks for the work you continue through the creative spirit of your people. Today also, we give thanks for the outreach that has been provided through Canadian Lutheran World Relief, and we pray for continued ministry to refugees and others in need as we transition away from We Care Kits as a relief program to new forms of care and outreach. Giver of all that is good, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who work cultivating the land and harvesting its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Help us who have enough to give with thankful hearts so that all may share in your abundance. Giver of all that is good. Hear our prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this earth, our home. We thank you for the wide sky and the warm sun, for creeks, rivers, lakes, and oceans. We thank you for the beautiful mountains and the ever-moving winds, for trees and plants and the grass underfoot. Your creation is overwhelmingly beautiful. We humbly pray that we may walk gently on your earth. Giver that is good, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we give you thanks for our families and our homes. We thank you for the love that comes to us through our friendships and our church family. As the pandemic limits our ability to be together, help us to find other ways to reach out to those around us. May your spirit lead us to remember and offer care to those who are lonely and those without homes. Giver of all that is good, hear our prayer. Loving God, we are grateful that you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands of doctors, nurses, paramedics, and medical workers and researchers. We pray for all who work for the good of your world. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy and healing. Today we especially remember Marianne and Judy Mick, as well as those we name now in our hearts. Giver of all that is good, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, we give you thanks for the opportunities you open to our church family at Ascension. We give you thanks for the opportunities to learn about and respond to the injustice in our culture. 
We are grateful for your presence in our outreach work, which we do in our neighborhood, through our community kitchen classes and programs. Adopt a Highway program, the community garden, and our little book nook. We give you thanks for the gift of our building, the beauty and the practicality of the space, the contractors, the workers, and volunteers who continue to work toward its completion. Help us to be open to the opportunities our building offers to better serve our community. Giver of all that is good, hear our prayer. Be with us as we live our mission as a community of Christians, empowered by the grace of God through the word and sacrament, to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with God. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of God. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who provides for our every need, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to give thanks and be glad. The blessing of God, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.